You know, they, uh, uh, my friend there that, uh, that you just showed me the picture of Oceanetti, he's a legend. Oceanetti is a legend. Now, when I see him and he talks about me, he says that I'm a legend. So, whatever it is, I'm just glad I'm alive and I couldn't have a better friend than Eddie. 1959, I was redoing my first time on the boulevard. At that time, it was in Grass Vale, formerly Hubbard and Roundtrees, at one time one of the finest taverns in the state of New Jersey. And while I was washing the walls with my dad, in walked this young fellow, I guess in his early 30s. He was well dressed. And he sat at the end of the bar, and uh, I served him a drink, and we got to talking. And he says, "See, I heard that you're doing very well." And I said, well, this is my second or third month in business. And I said, I heard you bought a tavern on the boulevard, off the boulevard near Ford Motor Company. That was 7-Eleven. That was August, that was August of 1959. That's 51 years ago. And his name was Tony Mader. I was talking with Tony about Ocean Eddie the other day. Did you oh, know him, uh, no Chuck? Legend. I know Ocean Eddie. Yeah, he's right as a legend. He's been around forever. He's a legend. And um, he had to play some of the biggest politicians in the state he used to go to Ocean Eddie. Any given afternoon, you might see uh, the chief of police, um, the mayor, senators, and they would stop that. He had great food also. And it was a political hangout for some of the biggest politicians in the state of New Jersey. And he's a terrific guy, Ocean Eddie. He was a, he's a all right. Okay. Larry, you're from uh, Jersey City all your life, right? Oh, Tell yes. me about Born that. Born and raised uh, at the junction, Harmon Street. Come from a large family. There's 18 of us, 13 boys, five girls. And, uh, I was born and raised at the junction. I now live in Bayonne. Uh, I went in the Navy. When I got out of the Navy, I went on the fire department. And I only worked two blocks from here, down here at Dwight Notion. And, uh, this became my my second home. When I wasn't at the firehouse, I was here. Or I was at my home with my family, and uh, this is one of the places that I hung out. And uh, it's called Ocean Eddie's. And this is what's left of it. Uh, it's been here over 30, about 38 years, something like that. Oh, I met Eddie uh, around 1968, and uh, it's been a a sort of love affair with the two of us uh, for that long, you know, up till this present day. Uh. Action. Years ago, being in the tavern business in the Super Bowl, we didn't uh, depend upon the uh, the pools or the sponsors of the pools to pay for the uh, the free lunch on the Super Bowl. It was up to the saloon keeper to pay for the uh, refreshments. And in that year, when Baltimore played the New York Jets, uh, I had bought uh, so many pounds of uh, kibasi links. I had the kibasi rolls made up the specifications, and I also bought the champagne Gallo, which <laughs> which was uh, twenty four dollars a case. And I says, win or lose, I says we're going to have a party here uh, for the for the Super Bowl. Joe Namus mother, is, her ancestry goes back to Slavonic, so I figured that's the reason why we're having kibasi. I made the homemade sauerkraut with uh, dried mushrooms from Poland, and as the Super Bowl ran, I says, I must have more people in my tavern on Ocean Navy than they had at the Super Bowl. And everybody took, put their bets on the Jets because they were getting 17 and a half points, and uh, I bet Baltimore because I bet more than two units, and I lost. But on the same token, everybody in my tavern was a winner. And after the game was over, they were celebrating, and all they kept saying was, here's the, because they won $15, $20. At that time, it was a lot of money. They didn't go to work the next day, but it was a lot of money to them. And they, and they says, here's to Broadway Joe, Broadway Joe. And this fellow sitting at the end of the bar says, Broadway Joe, he says, the hell with this? He says, I had 
four glasses of Gallo champagne, four glasses of champagne, and I had three or four kibasi sandwiches. And he says, I, he says, I didn't spend a dollar yet. He says, here's to my friend, Oceanetti, only because Broadway Joe had a restaurant in New York on Broadway. They call it Broadway Joe's. And he says, here's to my friend, Oceanetti. And from then on, in, on Monday morning, they says, is Oceanetti there? Uh, I says, uh, they say, yeah, you Oceanetti. And I says, okay. Uh, this was our our hangout for all of the guys in the uh, in the battalion, the second battalion, which is Greenville area here. Uh, we all used to come here, and, you know, after work, let off a little steam, you know, tell Eddie our problems, and and we even cashed our checks here, our paychecks, and Eddie would take care of us as he took care of everybody. And it was a sort of hangout for all the, the police and firemen in the area. I started my uh, my time and career my ta my career behind bars 52 years ago, coming out of Korea. I was also instrumental in starting the Happy Hour. Being in the service, we had a, uh, a Happy Hour in the Officers Club, and I said, "What's the Happy Hour?" They said, "Eddie." Uh, I was in Korea, and they said, "You go to the club, and it's only half price, which is a quarter." So. We had Heineken's for a quarter and Remy Martin for a quarter. And when I came back to the States, I said, I'm going to start a happy hour in my tavern. And before you know it, I started a happy hour in my tavern. Within a year, there was three or four other taverns in Jersey City. And before you know it, it spread all over the state of New Jersey, happy hour. Prior to that, I worked at the Jersey Shore in the Mammoth Hotel, a uh, very good hotel, one of the best. And uh, they didn't call it happy hour from four to six or from six to seven. They called it a cocktail hour. When uh, I got the place on the boulevard, used to be Hillman and Roundtree's, one of the most exclusive taverns in the state of New Jersey from 1935 until 1955. And when I bought it in 1959, it was uh, a little bit decayed uh, to the fact that the, the individual that was the owner, he, he, he was into a, a different type of a business and he was making more money. So when I bought the place, I bought it very cheap and uh, I cleaned the place up and it was the most beautiful uh, tavern in, this, in, the, in the state of New Jersey. It used to be Hillman and Roundtree's on the boulevard. And I, I called it uh, uh, the brass rail because I had 65 feet of brass rail to clean every Sunday morning with, uh, with my children and my wife. And uh, it, was a, it was laid down with the, the, a tile from Germany, and uh, we had mahogany uh, all over, cabinets, and uh, it got to be uh, too much of a chore for me to uh, work uh, one individual operating that uh, home and around for his e brass rail. I went back to work in uh, New York, in the garment district, I was addressed by it, and I wasn't satisfied. I bought this little tavern on Ocean Avenue, and uh, my wife says to me, Ed, you could not possibly put a kitchen here because the place is so small. And uh, I says, you're right. I says, there'd be no kitchen here. Needless to say, within two or three years, the iron workers came in. They wanted a hot lunch, and I managed to squeeze a kitchen in, and before you know it, I was feeding over 100, 100 iron workers, dock builders, electricians. I built, I was in charge of uh, logistics and supply for Port Liberté, for Newport City, and for the 12-story uh, apartment house across the street from me on Woodlawn and Ocean Avenue. And uh, from then on in, it was all, it was all gravy, and I, I loved Ocean Avenue. However, I was held up many times, and uh, the cops couldn't sit there all day long. Needless to say, they sat there for 24 hours a day, but some of them had to go home and uh, because they were going to get divorced also. But uh, we had a great time, and uh, I, I treated everybody properly. Uh, you, never went over, you never left my place unless you had a good time. And St. Patty's Day, Christmas, uh, Thanksgiving, uh, it wasn't bagpipes. We had a great party every time we had a party at Ocean Evans. All right, uh, 
talking about Ocean Eddies on Ocean Avenue in uh, Jersey City. Uh, a lot of the old timers will get a kick out of uh, some of the things that went on there. Uh, one of my, the biggest thing, the biggest surprise I ever got out of the place was after Eddie had closed and he moved to uh, working in Barrett's on the boulevard. He uh, been working there, how long were you there, Ed? Before 35 they, years. 35 probably, years. Probably there about six months, something like that. When all of a sudden I started getting inquiries from from different people that hung out in Eddie's, what you guys do with the sign? And I kept saying, what sign? What are you talking about? Ocean Eddie's sign, the sign from the bar on Ocean Avenue. And lo and behold, I go to work one day and I'm looking and, it's, and there is no sign. I said, somebody, somebody did take the sign, right? Uh, as it happens, uh, there was a lot of police and firefighters that hung out in the place, school teachers, we had bus drivers, you name them, a lot of construction workers. Uh, everybody was blaming somebody else for, for taking it. Nobody knew who had it. And uh, I kind of blamed the cops all the time. The cops were blaming the fire. I've even had people come in and say the dailies took it. You know, <laughs> me and my family, right? Uh, but lo and behold, it was uh, all probably six, seven months went by and uh, Eddie was working in Barrett's and I started hanging out in Barrett's too. When I got out of work and everything, I used to stop there, have a couple with him and uh, about 10 o'clock in the morning I would leave. Well, one day I'm in there and Gene, uh, the mason, right, he, he, Kuka, he turns around and uh, he says, no, you can't go. He says, you gotta stay, you gotta, I got something to show you. I wanna show you something. I said, okay, Gene, what's, you know, so he says, you gotta wait, you gotta wait. And I kept, I said, well, how long is it going? Two hours before the, the thing got off and- uh, Tell me about Gene. All right, well, Gene, Gene was the, uh, he was a, a mason and roofer. He did all kinds of work, you know, and- uh, Older guy though, right? Older, much older. Yeah, he was, he was in his, I guess, the late 60s, early 70s, something like that. Well, him and a few of his friends- uh, From Shannon's. From Shannon's, right, they come in uh, he says, they'll be here in a few minutes, right? It was like noontime when they finally did get there. And in comes the guys playing the accordions and all the, the, the Polish, Polish music and everything, right? It was like a parade, right? And the last guy coming in is wheeling this thing and I thought it was one of those play pianos that they put the cover over it and everything. Well, lo and behold, the music stops and the guy takes the plug, plugs this thing in and it's covered in plastic. And they open it up and there's the friggin' sign. Right? <laughs> right? They got it, they restored it. They put the light, the light was working in it and everything, and it looked it looked good. It looked like it was brand new. Right? And here I'm I'm saying, who the how the hell did you get that thing? He said, damn, it almost killed us. Him and another old guy put two ladders up and thought they were gonna take this thing, and it wasn't that light. Right? They almost lost it, and they almost lost themselves falling off the ladder and everything. But oh, what a what a surprise! Eddie was surprised. I was surprised. What about Barbara says hang that sign right here? And what happened was, uh, I says, well, now what are you going to do with the sign? And Brother Barrett, who owned the place, he turned around and says, we're going to hang it right in here. So, right over the door as you come into Barrett's, you'd have to look straight up to see it. It was hanging in there. And oh, it was on. And didn't you have a switch or something to turn it on and off? Yeah, you pull the plug out. Yeah, okay. <laughs> the Polish switch. Oh, yeah. Brother Barry says, yeah. keep that sign there. Yeah. And he used to put that sign on himself in the morning. Oh, yeah. 